Virtual reality is what the 1980s futurists imagined our daily lives would be. From video games as immersive as real life to Metaverse's new world entirely created under the rule of Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg, we've seen a lot of promises. Has anyone actually delivered yet? Well, not really. Virtual reality has a long runway ahead of it, but all too many have focused on the entertainment it could eventually provide versus the real value it already offers. But before we get into that, let's go over the two most overhyped uses for virtual reality, gaming and the metaverse. Gaming continues to grow in global popularity and those that own a virtual reality system and the amount of virtual reality games offered continue to rise as well. Surely, this is the future of all gaming, as no longer are we limited by keyboards, controllers, or any unnatural devices. However, data shows that the fastest growing segment of gaming is mobile, which is often regarded as the most basic device to play on. Despite a vocal minority of gamers that own high-end systems required to play many virtual reality games in the first place, the trend in gaming has shifted from a local sit-down activity to an on-the-go pastime. So what are the current problems with virtual reality gaming? Firstly, it's costly. You need a high-end PC or a current generation console alongside a separate and equally expensive VR kit to get started. Once you are up and running, your choices of games, although plenty, lacks the standards of current non-VR games. Because of how demanding it is to process games in virtual reality, often the graphics quality and general scope of the game suffers. Minus a few popular exceptions, such as Half-Life Alex, most games feel like a fun novelty at first, but quickly fade to a gimmick. Take Beat Saber, for example a game where you wield two lightsabers and hit corresponding cubes to the beat of a song, much to the familiarity to those that played Guitar Hero before it. However, many virtual reality games fall into a similar cycle as did the Nintendo Wii. The unique controls offer an immediate and fun challenge, but the lack of quality graphics, replayability, and ultimately precise controls eventually leave the consumers going back to conventional games utilizing a keyboard and mouse or a traditional controller. Virtual reality is still quite far off from having the accuracy and precision that are essential for replayability. They do offer unique experiences, such as the odd feeling of freedom you get when in virtual reality you can look down at your belt and grab something, or give someone a high five. These additional controls are isolated to virtual reality and provide immediate joy, but it seems many games are focused on these quick gimmicks and fail to provide enough substance to keep coming back. Think of the games of the past, from the original Pong, where two players would attempt to score on one another, to Nintendo's N64 playing four-player split-screen battles as different Bond characters in GoldenEye. These games were standalone activities and required a friend physically beside you to get the ultimate experience. Now compare that to today's most popular games. Fortnite, Minecraft, Grand Theft Auto, and League of Legends to name a few. What do they all have in common? They all prioritize online play and mostly with strangers. While most games offer the ability to join your real life friends online to cooperate, local split screen is largely a thing of the past. The result is a trend of gaming to become a much lonelier experience. If your real life friends aren't online to play with, these games encourage strangers to join you. Though this could be viewed as a new social opportunity, for many, these encounters are short lived and do not result in meaningful connections. The metaverse is attempting to use the same model of hoping online stranger encounters will lead to lasting relationships. It seems the only model that has perfected the strategy so far is online dating applications, as although the first encounter is online, the goal is to move offline. Games and other virtual environments struggle to grow relationships as they don't have that second phase of meeting in real life. The metaverse attempts to replicate the second phase through digitizing the real world experience. Can it work? It might but they aren't the first ones to try. Second Life by Linden Labs minus the virtual reality goggles is what the metaverse is. Often studied by anthropologists, the game's name is the most accurate description of the objective for players, to have a second life. The game has attempted to replicate the entire real world social experience from nightclubs, residential neighborhoods, museums, and more. At its peak, millions of dollars were spent on digital properties and much of reality's culture was successfully imported to the virtual landscape. Over time, those that remain on the game a decade later often seem to be replacing their first life with their second. 
For most people that have not logged on for years, their interests faded or their real lives got too busy. Those that remained often lacked a cultural fit to the real world or are trying to escape from it. There has been no indication from Facebook's metaverse that they will be able to have a different result, that over time, popularity will also dwindle, as no matter how accurately you replicate the real world, eventually those that have a happy and successful life will prioritize that, and only those that do not will remain. Metaverse's success is therefore reliant on people having a lack of success in their own lives. Let's just hope Zuckerberg doesn't get desperate to ensure that people's lives are miserable enough to warrant joining the metaverse. If gaming and the metaverse aren't the practical applications for virtual reality, then what is? The answer is simple, pretty much everything else. The problem that much of current virtual reality is marketed as is a replacement for something, such as a game controller or a social network. But if you dig a little deeper, you can see many emerging companies using virtual reality to complement existing technology. Healthcare may be the industry with virtual reality providing the greatest value add. Vicarious Surgical has created a robotic system designed for minimally evasive surgery, all while controlled through a doctor utilizing VR goggles. Their system allows robots to make exact movements during highly sensitive surgeries. By combining human knowledge with the precise movements of these medically tuned robots, patients have access to affordable yet powerful medical care with fewer restrictions on where they have to travel for surgery. Another healthcare startup, Surgical Theater, is a VR system that can combine a patient's MRIs, CT scans, and angiograms to reconstruct a 3D model of their brain's unique anatomy. Neurosurgeons can explore each of their patient's arteries, bones, and tissue to help them accurately plan the surgery and even practice the upcoming surgery on the 3D model. The system can also be used to walk patients through their brain's anatomy and the entire process of their surgery, making patients feel more informed about the details of their procedure. And it's not just the surgeons benefiting from virtual reality in the health industry. The startup Amelia Virtual Care provides a VR platform used by therapists who perform mental health assessments and interventions. Patients can take advantage of immersive environments meant to calm and soothe while doctors receive analytics and metrics that can be used for treatment. Training for professionals is some of the most obvious use cases for virtual reality that could be really reasonable long term. Take Transfer for example. They're a company that is pioneering the use of VR to simulate on-the-job training. Transfer creates simulations that enables users to feel as though they are embedded in the physical environment and experience an actual worksite. This enables trainees to perform hands-on training with the assistance of a pre-programmed digital coach all in a fully immersive 360 degree environment that is distraction free and safe. We could go on forever that there are more companies that you can count that start with the name virtual, like virtual speech, the app that places you on a virtual stage with a virtual crowd where you can practice your speech or presentation in front of an audience that imitates the mannerisms and sounds of real people. Another example, virtual spaces where users can build immersive three dimensional visualizations of properties with only a blueprint. Real estate professionals can send digital properties to their potential clients at any time, transport them to the property from the comfort of their own couch, and walk them through the entire concept. Virtual this, virtual that, you get the point. Virtual reality has a lot going for it. The focus on gaming in the metaverse can arguably be misguided. The exciting developments in VR is that it can fundamentally change how we interact daily, from routine tasks, providing efficiency and training for professionals, and reducing physical travel. The future might be a whole lot more virtual, but the real winners are the ones that make our reality better, not virtualize it.